The Middle East Institute at Georgia State University presents Arabic Grammar Unpacked. In this lesson, we will be discussing what are called defective Y verbs. As we know, there are five different types of irregular verbs in Arabic. The first type, the assimilated verbs, use wow as their first letter. The second type, hollow verbs, use wow or ya yeah as their middle letter. The third type, defective verbs, use wow or ya yeah as their final letter. The fourth type, doubled verbs, have the same last two letters. And the final type, hamzated verbs, use hamza as their first letter. Today, we will be discussing defective verbs, specifically those defective verbs that use ya yeah as their last letter. But there's something a little trickier with verbs that use ya yeah as their last letter because there are really two kinds of them. We have the verb to walk, masha yamshi. We say mashaytu ilal hafla, I walked to the party. Amshi ilal jamia fi sabah, I walk to the university in the morning. But then we have the verb baqiya, to remain. Baqitu, not baqaytu, fil hafla hatta athalitha. And sa'abqa, not abqi, fil maktaba hatta montasaf alayl. So there are really two kinds of these verbs. The first one, masha yamshi, uses alif maksura or ya with sukun in the past tense and uses letter ya in the present tense. The second type, baqiya, uses ya in the past tense and alif maksura in the present tense. So we can see over here in green how these verbs differ. The first one uses alif maksura in the past and ya in the present. The second one uses ya in the past and alif maksura in the present. Grammar books often put these two together, which makes them very complicated. So we're going to separate them out, and we're only going to deal with the second group in this lesson, the ones that use ya in the past tense and are therefore called defective ya verbs or defective y verbs. Let's look at the past tense conjugation of the verb lakia to meet or encounter someone. Anna lakitu, we use the long vowel ya, anta lakita, anti lakiti, huwa lakia, he a lakiat. The dual forms follow the pattern, nahnu lakina, antum lakitum, and then hum is lako, that's the odd one out in this case, so be careful with using it. We can use these verbs in sentences. Did you meet that guy in class? I want to meet new friends this semester. Judud is the human plural of jadid. We can use a different verb, nasia, to forget. Limada nasitum defaterakum. Why did you forget your notebooks? Or la nurid anansa attavakir. We don't want to forget the tickets. All three of these verbs, baqiya, laqiya, and nasiya, all have the same pattern, the defective y verb pattern. In the present tense, they use alif maksura where possible. Ana alqa, anta talqa. But the anti form, because of its suffix, becomes talqain. Huwa yalqa, hiya talqa. The dual forms, talqayan, yalqayan, talqayan, not often used in conversation. The nahnu form, nalqa. And then we say, antum talqaun. The last letter of the verb combines with the suffix, so we put sukun over the wow. So say, talqaun, not talqoon. And the home form works the same way, yalqaun. The little used all female forms have regular formations here. Now we can use these in sentences. Urid an alqa astiqa judud had al fasl. I want to meet new friends this semester. But remember, alif maqsura can only be the last letter in a word. So if we're going to attach a pronoun suffix to this verb, we have to turn it back into regular old boring alif again. So urid an alqahum, the pronunciation stays the same, but the spelling is going to change a little bit because alif maqsura can only be the last letter in a word. Same thing goes with to forget. La nurid anansa atadakir. We don't want to forget the tickets. But if we're going to replace the tickets with their pronoun suffix ha, because of course non human plural is feminine singular, we're going to change the alif maksura back to a regular old alif. 
If we look at the Mudarit Mansub, things don't change very much. Alqa, Talqa, now Talqay instead of Talqayn, but that follows the pattern you should be accustomed to at this point. Yalqa, Talqa, the dual forms lose their noons but otherwise remain the same. Nahnu Nalqa doesn't change. Antum Talqao, again, we lose our noon, but the pattern does not change. Same goes with the all female forms and the hum form. We say hum Yalqao. Now remember that when we use lam or any of the other particles that put a verb in the muldarat majzum, the third form of the present tense, we have this funny rule that causes long vowels to change into their corresponding short vowels sometimes. So lam yabqa, he did not remain, becomes yabqa. Lam alqa, I did not meet, becomes alqa. So they lose their final alif maqsura, which in an unvoweled text is going to change their spelling entirely and probably confuse you unless you know the most important vocabulary words from this pattern. So it should come as no surprise that I encourage you to memorize the most important vocabulary words of any given pattern. So lam tansaun becomes tansao and is a lot easier to recognize, although it still looks like it's missing its final letter, which is why this particular group of verbs is so tricky. Same thing for the hum form, yabqaun becomes yabqao, but it doesn't lose its last letter entirely like the first two examples do. Remember the long vowel in the jussive rule. If the verb has a vowel as a root letter, which these all do, their final root letter is ya, and it's in the Muldarit Majzum, or present Jassiv, what we use with lem and with commands, then the long vowel, the Alif Maksura here, becomes the corresponding short vowel, that is Fatha, unless the verb has a long vowel suffix. So this rule is very difficult to internalize because it changes the spellings of verbs but doesn't really change their pronunciation very much. It's something you can get away in speaking colloquial Arabic without using at all. Let's take a look at a few examples of this pattern. If I say, لماذا لم تبقى حتى الظهر? Why didn't you stay until noon? The alif maksura at the end of the verb has transformed into alif because of lem. And it looks like it's missing a third letter entirely. And what's especially confusing for the intermediate student is that it's unclear which letter is missing. Is it the second, third, or first letter? And which letter is that? That's why this particular set of verbs is such a challenge to use, especially in the majzum and in commands. If it's plural, لماذا لم تبقوا في بيوتكم? Why didn't you stay in your houses? Here, it's a little bit less unclear which letter is missing, but it's still confusing for the intermediate student. So again, I can't emphasize enough learning and memorizing the most common vocabulary words in each particular pattern. If I say لم أنسى التذكرة, I did not forget the ticket. Here, again, the alif maqsura has transformed into fatha, so it's unclear where the missing letter would be. Again, vocabulary will be your friend here. But if we say لم ينسى التذكرة, they did not forget the tickets. Here, it's not quite so unclear which letter is missing, but still it appears that there's a missing letter, so watch out for these. If we look at the conjugation in the majzum, again, the missing alif maqsura changes into fatha, changing the spelling of the verbs entirely. The antiform becomes talqay instead of talqi. Yalqa, talqa, the dual forms, since they have long vowel suffixes, get to keep their last vowel, so they're much easier to tell what the three-letter root of the verb is. The nahnu form suffers from the same problem as the other singular forms. And then when we go into the plural human forms, they get to keep their suffixes, so they're a little bit less difficult to understand where they come from. Still challenging, but not nearly as challenging as the anna or nahnu forms, for example. When we're forming commands out of these verbs, since commands are in the majzum, the same rule applies. So la tansa atavkira, don't forget the ticket. That's talking to a masculine singular person. Bel insa habibatek asabika, but forget your ex-girlfriend. Here we have the affirmative command. Because the first root letter in the verb has sukun over it, we have to add the corresponding helping vowel to make the affirmative command. So the command is insa. But if we're talking to a woman, we'd say la tanse atavkira, and it's much more obvious where the missing letter is. And if we were to command her affirmatively, we'd say bel inse habibik asabik. Do forget your ex-boyfriend. If we're doing it in the plural, the same pattern's going to apply. La tabqa fil bayt hadha al-masat. Don't remain at home this evening. Bel ibqa 
في المطعم معنا but stay at the restaurant with us. Here we have both the helping vowel and the missing letter, thus making it doubly confusing, which is why I'm drawing your attention to it. In the plural, however, these are a little bit easier to deal with. لا تبقوا في البيت هذا المساء. Don't you all remain in your house this evening. بل ابقوا في المطعم معنا but stay in the restaurant with us. So these verbs present a real challenge for many people because of the missing third letter. This is especially the case in the majzum and with commands. So learn your conjugation patterns and especially learn the most common vocabulary words used with each pattern.